uh, just in terms of the uh, rankings for HPCG. Uh, this time we have um, we have 40 systems in the list, so that's um, that's up from 25 just uh, at SC, as Mike uh, mentioned. Um, most of the entries that we have are actually in the top 500 list, although not all of them are, are there. And uh, I guess I'm not sure the exact reason for that, but they, they hadn't gotten around to running the HPL. Uh, there are some new uh, systems uh, which, are, which are in the list, some systems which were just put in place. Uh, the system at, um, in Saudi Arabia at Kaos, the Shaheen II, and also at uh, Moscow State University, Lomonosov uh, II uh, are, are also in the list. Uh, there's strong showings from uh, the Japanese, uh, especially the NEC system. So, as we'll see, NEC is achieving really the highest percentage of peak performance over all the other systems. NEC, of course, makes vector computers, and uh, as we know, vector computers are perhaps easier to get at high-performance computing, as well as a very strong interconnect uh, between, uh, between the system. Um, uh, we have updated results from the system at the uh, University of Texas Austin, the NSF uh, TAC machine. Uh, the earlier numbers that we had uh, really didn't show scaling or uh, did, didn't show a larger problem, so it was uh, really not a good indicator of the performance of that machine. And we also have a result from the Blue Gene, uh, Blue Gene system, IBM's Blue Gene. That's the first time that we have that. So without further ado, since we have a very short uh, schedule here, uh, let me get to the, uh, the winners. Um, so we're going to give out three, three awards for uh, number one, two, and three. So the number three system, uh, the winner uh, goes to uh, the, the Titan system at Department of uh, Energy. Okay, and moving on to the number two system is uh, uh, the K computer. So the, the K computer uh, achieved the second highest rate of execution at 0.46 uh, petaflops. Number three on the top 500 list, so it's a little switch in the ordering. And uh, the number one system uh, for the HPCG benchmark is uh, is the Tianhe 2. Um, just so you get a picture of the of uh, a sense of the list, if you will. Uh, so here's uh, here's the here's the here's the top 10 uh, on the list. So this uh, this is the this indicates the rank on HPCG. Uh, it's it's the, uh, the Tianhe 2 system in Guangzhou at the National Supercomputing Center. It, it's a machine built on Intel processors, uh, uh, plus Xeon 5, plus a custom interconnect that the National University for Defense Technology put in place. It has 3 million cores in that system, uh, 34 petaflops for HPL. It ranked number one on HPL, and uh, as, as mentioned, it's 0.58 petaflops. So there's that bracketing, that those bookends, if you will, um, uh, it achieved 1.1% of the theoretical peak performance. Okay, so again, this is, uh, this is really uh, marking uh, the, the bounds uh, for some kinds of operations, uh, namely sparse matrix uh, operations, uh, looking at the performance for those operations, um, uh, where some effort has gone into doing the optimization of that. And RECAN system achieving 4% uh, of the theoretical peak uh, the, int, uh, the, uh, the system, the Titan system at the Cray system at the Oak Ridge, 1.2% of theoretical peak. Uh, we have a, uh, a Blue Gene Q uh, from Argonne at 1.7% uh, of theoretical peak. And uh, this uh, system at Ames, which, um, which came in at 11th place on the HPL benchmark, uh, comes in at the 5th place. So there's been some switching of ordering, as you can see from this, uh, from this list here, uh, at, at 27 and you know, if you just scan down the list here, you see you know quite a quite a variation in terms of the ordering. Uh, they they were number 33 on the um, uh, the Edison system. Uh, it's number 33, and it appears number 10 on the HPCG list. And as Mike was pointing out earlier, uh, the interconnect on this is quite strong and gives rise to that uh, that three that three percent of the theoretical peak. If we take a look at the next 10 systems, I don't want to go through the whole list here, but I do want to point out. Um, uh, at least one interesting machine here, and that's the machine I mentioned earlier. So there's a system here which gets about 11% of theoretical peaks. So that's, that's very impressive uh, for this kind of application on this machine, and that's this uh, Earth simulator. Uh, the, the system has not been uh, benchmarked uh, here uh, for uh, HPL, so we don't have a, we don't have a, uh, that, that hasn't been ranked for, for HPL, uh, so we don't have a ranking there. But again, very impressive, uh, very impressive show for uh, for the um, uh, for that uh, vector machine, 
And again, there's a, there's a smattering of uh, vector, uh, of um, accelerators on the list and uh, uh, from uh, uh, indicated by the red, uh, the red indication here. I'm not going to go through all 40 machines as there are too many there to look at, but I do want to point out um, that bookending effect. Uh, uh, but, so this is, a, this is a chart of the uh, systems that we have um, on the list. Um, uh, the, the red marker is the theoretical peak performance for the system. Uh, the green uh, triangle is the HPL number. So that's, that's the deviation from theoretical peak that we see from, from HPL. And we see some machines get very close to the theoretical peak performance for HPL, some a bit wider gap associated with that, uh, with that performance. And uh, when we match that with uh, the uh, HPCG numbers, it looks something like this. So the X now represents uh, the performance achieved for uh, HPCG. And again, you know, the, the uh, peak performance, the LINPAC number, and then the, uh, the HPCG number show that uh, gap and that, wide, that, that very wide gap. We don't have all the entries. That is to say, uh, we've taken uh, you know, a collection of machines here. We don't have all the entries for all the machines on the top 500. I don't think we want to collect 500 entries for this benchmark. As Mike was pointing out, I think we'd be happy with the top 50. I'd be happy to have top 50 machines for this benchmark. They really represent you know, the, the, the bulk of uh, the, the high end of high performance computing, if you will. So that's, uh, that's the way the uh, HPL, uh, HPCG numbers stack up to HPL, if you will. Uh, you know, that very wide gap. Uh, some people are shocked by that, that they just achieve such a low percent of theoretical peak, but I think realistically, we all understand that real applications uh, don't come anywhere near what we see from um, from the peak performance or from the HPL uh, from the HPL numbers. Okay, I guess that uh, pretty much wraps up what we had to say here. Our 15 minutes are up. There's some there's a technical reports that are available uh, which describe uh, the benchmark and, and they're listed here. Um, the slides that that are shown that that are shown here will be posted online at the um, at the website, our website. So you can go to the website for HPCG and pick up the slides as well as the reports and anything that goes along with that. So thank you very much for your attention. And uh, if you're interested, we'll stick around for questions. Uh, but that, that concludes this uh, session. So thank you so much.